G'day guys, Googs here, you're welcome to my drunk philosophy. At the moment there's a lot of hatred around the world, apparently. There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of violence, apparently. It only takes a cursory look at statistics though to find out the opposite is true. In fact, most violent crime is on its way down and has been since the 1980s. So why do we keep hearing this narrative? Violence is up, violence is up, violence is up. The rhetoric has changed because violence used to be, at least when I was younger, by definition, a physical force put upon somebody that causes some form of injury, physical injury. So a punch to the face, that's violence, right? But the rhetoric has changed because now people are saying, well, violence also comes in the form of words. So putting force upon people with words can cause emotional injury, okay? However, the distinction must be made that violence in the, in the form of the physical is very different to violence in the form of the emotive. And then we come up against this word called offence. You know, I've taken offence. In other words, you've insulted me or you've said something I don't agree with and it's something I'm passionate about, uh, therefore you have committed violence against me with your words. Now, I'd like to point out at this juncture that people who have been physically assaulted bear both the emotional scars of that physical assault as well as the physical damage received. Okay, there's a double impact there with physical violence, especially, let's say, domestic violence. There is a double whammy. There is the emotional and the physical. Okay? Whereas with the words, they're words. Okay? Yes, they can be harmful, for sure. I'm not denying that. But to put them in the same ballpark as physical violence is wrong. It's not the same thing. Now, because the conflation has been made that words can be just as dangerous as uh, physical violence, people are starting to think that the world is a very violent, horrible place because, hey, look, somebody called me a bad name or someone told me to go shoot myself, okay? Some random person you do not know and will not ever have a physical interaction with, you know, you know, maybe 999 times out of a thousand or possibly even more, yet that's considered just as bad as, say, someone telling you to, uh, you know, go top yourself or they're going to kill you standing right next to you with their fists raised. Violence isn't on the rise. It's on the way down. Another problem is, of course, in the media and in social media and all the rest of that. Uh, for example, if you've got a local neighbourhood watch Facebook page or Twitter site or whatever it is, uh, you're going to only hear about the bad stuff that goes down in your neighbourhood or in your city. In the case of the media, they need to talk about the things that they know are going to grab your attention emotionally, Okay. It's not saying it's not news, by the way. You know, uh, just recently there's been a, a horrific spate of murders of young ladies in Melbourne. And I want you to understand that that's news. That's actually news. That's something that we need to know. That's a horrific uh, series of crimes. However, what you find is the way it's written is put in such a way that it, it, it's there to be an emotive Okay, it doesn't provide the fact as much as it provides the feeling. What's happened today is we have become, by being more emotionally aware of, let's call it emotional violence, or bad words, or nasty words, we think that the world is a more violent place. And in the West, it isn't. Everything's in decline as far as violence goes. And the same can be said for the, the fandoms around the world. You know, everybody, everybody's an armchair critic. Always been the case. I'm sure that there were people who read Sherlock Holmes back in the Victorian era, you know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes, and went, oh, this is crap. 
this is dross, and then they'll give a big spiel to whoever the hell's closest to them. And that, but that's the end of it, right? On the internet today, though, you can give a big spiel. You can tweet, directly tweet at the creators of the television show, the book series, whatever it is, and, and you can vent your anger towards them. Okay, and I'm not suggesting you should do this, by the way. I think that that's, it's a terrible thing to do. Why would you do that? I mean, okay, it's not your, you're pissed off with the ending of a book or a TV series or whatever it is. Fine. But don't go to the people who wrote it, who invested a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of patience into developing and creating whatever it is you've decided you don't like. But we used to vent, our, we've always vented our spleens. But nowadays, because words are violence, right? <laughs> that, you know, you, you say to someone, oh, you, you know, you're, you're a shit writer, you're a shit director, you're a, a piece of crap and all this other stuff. Well, there you go. Oh, this person, you know, I've been violently offended. One thing that the internet has done by connecting us is allowed everybody to actually vent their spleens online and everybody can see each other venting their spleens online and when you vent your spleens it's not necessarily your rational part of your brain that's working there when you vent your spleen right you're just blurting out the first emotional response you've had to whatever it is that's upset you and that's not a good thing by the way but other people are going to pick that up and they're not they don't know you they don't know you're just venting your spleen and so they take offence because they might have enjoyed it or they might be the person who invented it or created it or helped with the creation of it. And, of course, they're going to feel attacked and they're going to come back at you. And next thing you know, we've got these Twitter wars and tweet wars and all the rest of this crap going on, okay? I don't think there's ever been a time in human history, in fact, I know there's never been a time in human history where so many opinions have been just free-range, and I think that's one of the real big issues we're having right now in our time, especially with younger people. Now, for us adults, it's bad enough, right? But we can vent our spleen and just go, oh, let it go. Let it go. But teenagers, man, who've got their hormones raging, they've got all these emotions going down. It's not as easy for those folk. I mean, if uh, you take yourself back to your, if you are a teenager, you probably know what I mean. But for us adults who haven't been teenagers for a while, just take, you back, take yourself back to teenager and whatever it was you were really into as a teenager. In my case, it was heavy metal music, okay? That was my thing, especially the band Metallica. That was my thing. And if you said, you know, Metallica are the worst band in the world, you're likely to cop an earful from me. Well, imagine that now on a more global scale, okay? So people... You know, that use the word triggered. I don't like the word triggered because in this context, at least, the word triggered, it really should be for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. It's really that. It's not about you've been offensive, you've, uh, someone's offended you, you've had a major emotional overreaction to it and it's just really upset you. That's very different to PTSD where the sufferers have a legitimate mental illness and it legitimately causes them not just emotional pain but uh, for example in the case of uh, people coming back from wars they might even flash back and relive it you know whatever it was that that they experienced you know so I, I don't like the word trigger but you know you somebody says something it's pissed you off because you have a strong feeling about or passion about whatever the subject is and you go off that's not the same as PTSD style triggering at all, not even close. The other thing that's allowed, though, is the smart asses, the larrikins, right? And uh, I'm, I'm certainly not a young larrikin like I used to be. If I was on the internet and I was still like 17, 18 years of age in the modern era, oh, wow. You know, I probably would have been banned off Twitter and Facebook 20,000 times by now. <laughs> Because I was, a, I was a bit of a, well, I was a complete smartass back then. And so many people are out there being a smartass. But the problem is, it's really hard on the internet to tell if someone's being a smartass. Because you can't see their face, right? You can't see their sarcasm if someone's being really, really sarcastic. 
And I think that's another reason why a lot of people are taking offence. And people are just making up shit to piss off other people and to excuse themselves being upset. The, the, the more I look at social media, the more I think it is a terrible idea. I don't care whether it's Twitter or Facebook. And yes, I know I usually link to my Facebook page. I don't go on Facebook anymore to generally have an argument so much as, as to try to just calmly and rationally say, well, hang on, what is it that we're actually talking about? And let's have a discussion about this rather than just yell at each other and call, end up calling each other names. Let's learn from each other because everybody um, everybody has a particular expertise in something you know everybody has a hobby and in that hobby you've learned to become an expert at whatever that subject is or at least more knowledgeable than the average joe so we can add that life experience we can add all this to each other so with social media let's start doing that okay now, excuse me for chewing i'm quitting cigarettes at the moment it's my third or fourth t attempt but hey well, i'll get there eventually <laughs> Now, I'm having a midlife crisis, about bloody time maybe, get a bit healthier. Anyway, I digress. So let's take social media as what it is. It's just a big discussion forum. If you find yourself getting too emotionally wrapped up in stuff, back back out of it. And and it's not, oh, if you can't take, they get out of the kitchen, it's a case of the kitchen's already on fire. And if, uh, if you're averse to the kind of fire that's in the kitchen or the kind of topics that you're going to hear, then don't enter the fray because it's just going to upset you and you're going to say something and then everybody else gets upset and etc. etc. Okay? So, yeah, it's about time we sort of, I think, started backing away and not letting our kids on social media. That is a big thing. Given what I've just said, think about that. You, you, you're actually putting your kids in a position well before they're emotionally stable, I'm not saying that most adults are or even all adults are, but you know, emotionally stable enough to handle it with all the other crap that's going on in their lives. You know, They've got so many lessons to learn between the ages of 13 and 18. It isn't funny. Uh, it's a v five years to learn everything, pretty much how you're going to be as an adult. Um, so we need to start thinking about that. You know, Mark Zuckerberg isn't your friend. He's a capitalist, uh, and I have no problems with capitalism, except for in this case, it's between him and Jack Dorsey of Twitter have basically got the monopoly on social media. Two companies. Um, you know, that's not a healthy thing for capitalism. You want as much competition as possible. There are other avenues and outlets out there. There's Minds.com and Gab.com and things like this. But most people go to either Facebook or Twitter, all right? Quite a few, obviously, Instagram, but it might as well be Facebook, just mainly concentrating on photos. So anyway, that's my little chat on today's subject, which is, you know, looking after yourself emotionally, essentially, and um, not 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 believing the so much of the hype that's around at the moment. Everybody is a critic. Everybody is an expert, and you know we don't have to partake in somebody else's opinion words aren't the same as violence in the terms of physical assault and we need to start uh, coming back to the point where sticks and stones can break my bones but names will never hurt me anyway guys that's it from me today i'm googs this is my drunk philosophy and i'll catch you later Uru.